Arkansas from Governor Asa Hutchinson. Major uh, for our vaccine, vaccination effort. And uh, let me start back in a little bit more traditional way, which is starting with our case report. And uh, if we can go to our first uh, graph, uh, which uh, really has some uh, good news there, uh, because you can see right in the middle that our total new cases is 1,331. And while that's a high number, that is significantly lower than it was a week ago. And our active cases, the next line you can see is declined by 1,854. And uh, that is a relief. Uh, the lagging indicator, which is the saddest part of it, is that we've had 43 additional deaths. Uh, and we need to remember uh, that that is a reflection of the cost of the COVID spread and ultimately where a certain percent of the cases lead. Uh, whenever you look at uh, the top left, it's the confirmed cases uh, that we see, uh, 841 uh, confirmed cases, and we had uh, 490 new uh, probable cases through an antigen test. Uh, in terms of our testing, we've done 8,300 uh, approximately of both PCR and antigen tests. Uh, we see that, uh, I don't know whether, it, we'll wait and see whether it is the demand that is declining on that somewhat because of our pressure is uh, being reduced, but uh, that is a little bit lower than it was a week ago. In terms of hospitalizations, we're up two, and then the ventilators down seven, and you can see the top counties there as well. And I think the, if you go to the next one, you'll see this in graph form, which is a seven-day rolling average of our confirmed and probable cases combined. And uh, certainly you can see uh, that trend line is pointing downward. Uh, and uh, some of those will be backfilled a little bit, but uh, that is good news. We have to be mindful that we've had some dips in the past and it surges up. We don't want that to happen again. And then the next one you see the hospitalizations, uh, that's reflecting the fact that we've had a number of days in the last week that we've had a reduction in hospitalizations in our meeting today with our COVID winter task force. Uh, they all indicate that uh, uh, it's better, it's manageable, but we're still increasing our capacity at the same time, not knowing what the rest of this month, the next month will be like. Our next one is our active cases, again, which I already indicated uh, is a reflection of uh, people recovering and our new cases coming on board is not as uh, high as it has been in the past. Uh, this is uh, the week by week look at this. And if you look at over the last uh, two weeks, there's been a 25% uh, decline uh, in our new case growth. And so we're very uh, pleased with that. Uh, hopefully that trend will continue. Uh, and then the next one is uh, the seven day rolling average of positive case. We've seen it go down a little bit, uh, actually consistently go down, but it goes down like a point, uh, point 0.10 uh, every, every day. Hopefully that will continue. That will flatten out at the bottom whenever more cases come in over those reporting days. But Clearly, you're making a little bit of progress on positivity, but still way too high uh, in terms of our CDC guidance. <clears throat> and this uh, is the one look at our public health regions across the state. And you can see that uh, while we were going straight up for uh, a number of weeks, uh, whenever you look at the top one is the Northwest region, the orange one. We've had a significant decline in new cases. Uh, whenever you look at the central region, you've had a decline. Uh, the blue in northeast, a decline. And then they're lower, uh, in which is the good news, but they're more flat uh, in terms of southeast and southwest, but at a much lower level of new cases. And so everybody be mindful that, first of all, uh, we still have the virus in every part of the state. Uh, our new cases are still significantly high, even though they're less than they were two weeks ago, and that we're going to continue to have challenges until our vaccination uh, is uh, permeating uh, our society and population here in Arkansas. And that brings me to the 
vaccinations. Uh, to bring you up to date on this, this is uh, today's report. We've received, as you can see, an additional 18,600 uh, doses. Whenever we receive a new shipment, then uh, that means our inventory has increased, and we've got to work hard to get those in the arms of people. Doses given today is a good high of 13,647. So well done pharmacies and hospitals and those that are receiving the doses. And for the state plan that we have control over, 50.3% of our doses are out. Uh, if you look at our long-term care, that is the federal partnership that we don't have as much control over, uh, that is lagging behind but they have assured me that they have schedules with different long-term care facilities to do the vaccination in the coming days and that that will be completed uh, by, the end of, uh, by the end of the month, which is what our goal was. We are gonna have some extra doses there that we're working with uh, our, our federal partners to make sure that we get this into our communities and out. We're trying to accelerate that the colonel is working on that daily. Uh, and you can see our current phase 1B, uh, who we're doing, and that's all up on the website as well. And then we wanted to, because the most frequently asked question is, how do I know where to go to get a vaccination? So if you are in the priority group, 70 plus, if you're a teacher, the teacher should go, of course, to their superintendent to know what the plan is. Uh, but if you're 70 plus, you want to know information about where to get a vaccine. If you go to the Department of Health website, and this is what you'll see, and then they've made it simple. You simply click for COVID-19 vaccine information, and that will take you to another page in which I'm going to walk over here so I can point at it. Uh, you can see the list of 1A and 1B pharmacies uh, that you can uh, click on, and that will take you to the exact map. Uh, it will have a listing of all of them and then a map of where they are that you click on the map, it will give you the address. And so in addition to the pharmacies, we'll be receiving information from time to time about uh, greater mass uh, vaccination clinics that are being held. You can learn that from your community. Your pharmacy might be uh, advertising or your hospital. Follow their websites, but you can also get that information on our Department of Health website. In addition, if you go to the governor, .arkansas.gov, you have the same information that can link to the Department of Health website. So uh, many different ways to get that information. And with that, uh, if you go to the next one, uh, the next one, uh, I want to set the stage for uh, Dr. Romero to come. I've asked him to talk about the new strain that we see uh, in different parts of the globe that is starting to come to different states in Arkansas and I wanted him to talk about what that means, what we need to watch out for, and how we're going to detect it if one of the new strains come here to our state. Uh, Dr. Romero. Thank you, Governor. Um, so um, let me begin by saying that uh, these strains are normal. Uh, these are variants. They will arise during the course of, the, of a viral infection. And because this is a pandemic, we can see various uh, variants uh, throughout the world. Um, the variant we are now uh, concerned about and has been uh, uh, listed as top on the list by the CDC is a variant that came from uh, Great Britain. Um, it is already here in this country. Um, it, there are 10 states that are reporting it. Um, we are actively looking for this virus. Uh, we can detect it using our diagnostic tests and then have those specimens sent to the CDC for further analysis. We have already sent specimens to the CDC which were suspicious. They have not come back as positive and there are still, uh, un, at the current uh, moment, eight specimens in, uh, on, in the CDC uh, to be sequenced. The virus will eventually get here. Um, it's just a matter of time. Um, what uh, the CDC predicts is that by March, uh, this virus will be the predominant virus uh, in the United States. Um, these changes, these variants, um, have different degrees of fitness, just like a runner. Um, and um, the, the more fit the virus, the more able it is to transmit itself and to propagate itself within the population. This particular virus is um, quite uh, transmissible. 
it's about 50 to 70 times more transmissible than the current virus in our environment, which means that um, we have a greater chance of infecting another individual if we are um, positive and we expose each other uh, to the virus. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't prevent it. Uh, we can prevent it by using the three W's, which you've heard me say over and over again, wear the mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. We know that these viruses will continue to, to arise. Um, I think that in the future, one of our big concerns is that this could lead to another spike uh, in the number of cases because of the transmissibility. It also impacts our vaccine program because in order to really bring the virus under control, we're gonna have to have larger numbers of individuals vaccinated. So it impacts on multiple aspects. Uh, we can, as I said before, detect it. Uh, the two other areas I want to talk about is the, eff the effectivity of the of virus, um, uh, sorry, the vaccine against the virus. Um, currently, uh, from what uh, we have discussed with, uh, that is the ACIP has discussed with vaccine manufacturers, it appears that the current vaccine is active against this particular virus. So that seems to be uh, doing well and we won't have a problem with that. But it could mutate or change over time. There are other viruses. Uh, you, some people may have heard of a virus that's coming from Brazil. We, has, we have not seen it here, nor have we seen another virus from South Africa. But the one from Brazil is not as susceptible to monoclonal antibodies that we are using actively in our state and are making a difference. So we will keep you abreast of this, but we do have the means of controlling it, and it is as simple as wearing a mask, washing your hands, and watching your distance. So I'll end here and uh, turn this over to Secretary Key. Forgive me, to the Governor. Thank you, Dr. Merrow. Thank you, Governor. Uh, today, I want to announce uh, the rollout of a new resource that we are providing to schools and to the communities around the state of Arkansas. In light of COVID-19, many of our students and their families found themselves in needs of, of uh, need of wraparound supports or support services uh, that uh, sometimes uh, are, are needed to help students be successful. Uh, this has really been a challenge to us for those students uh, that do not uh, come to school that do not come to on for on-site instruction that are trying to succeed in remote learning and uh, in many cases uh, the, the the challenges that they face uh, become a barrier to uh, academic success so we partnered with the department of human services to create a statewide community resources portal uh, the portal is displayed here website uh, at the bottom of this slide uh, can be accessed and used by schools, and community organizations, and all Arkansans to locate specific supports within or near their community. Uh, when this is fully built out, all counties will be represented here with a right, wide range of supports, including food security, clothing closets, physical, mental health supports, and other types of supports. Uh, this list will continue to grow uh, as we get more community organizations uh, that say, hey, I have something that I can contribute to this, uh, they will be able to partner with us to get their resource listed. If you look at the top of uh, uh, the right hand of the slide under resource links, there is a uh, place in the drop down where community organizations can submit their information so that they can be included on this list. Currently, there are over 50 categories of supports that are available, and we know that this will be critical, uh, not just during this time of COVID, but even afterward, uh, to help our students and their families get the types of supports that they need. Uh, the second thing I want to announce today regarding the COVID emergency leave, uh, as has been reported at the end of December, uh, we fully expended all of the CARES Act funds uh, that had been allocated for the COVID emergency leave. Uh, and we had $4.6 million in additional claims. Uh, we have uh, just recently learned that our ESSER II funds, this is the new round of federal funding, uh, can be used to offset those costs. So we will be seeking the uh, appropriation from the General Assembly for $4.6 uh, for, from the state set aside of ESSER II uh, to be able to meet those uh, outstanding claims from the COVID emergency leave. That will close the books on 2020. And then districts, and we, as we've encouraged previously from this podium, we've encouraged districts to continue some type of COVID emergency leave using their, uh, the, the funds that they have re are receiving uh, from the latest round of ESSER II. 
Uh, that completes my report, Governor. Thanks, Secretary Key. And finally, before I turn it over for questions, I wanted to emphasize today, and we'll emphasize it next week, that uh, in uh, February, we're going to have the Super Bowl. Uh, and whenever you look at the Super Bowl, which occurs on February 7th, uh, that is a time of parties, is a time of getting together. And we need to start thinking now that we do not want to repeat a circumstance in which we have an increase in cases again because of close contact. And so I encourage everyone to rethink uh, their Super Bowl party atmosphere. Uh, let's uh, avoid uh, large gatherings. Uh, let's uh, make sure we're careful so we don't see the spike in cases that we've seen previously. We'll talk more about that next week. And with that, uh, we'll turn it over for questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right here. Uh, so why, why are CVS and Walgreens still getting more allocation when they, you know, when they have administered so few doses? Because it's on a federal contract. Uh, so that's uh, the federal government contracted with CVS and Walgreens, and they're, they're allocated those doses based upon uh, what we saw as the uh, census in our long-term care facilities. But because we've had a decline lately in our uh, long-term care facilities uh, in terms of the numbers, there's an excess uh, number of doses that really have been allocated. So we're working hard. First of all, that number there, hopefully that will be given out in the next two weeks as we, uh, as they have clinics scheduled, as they work with their uh, long-term care facilities to get them vaccinated. But we know that we're going to have extra there, and that's what Colonel Ader is uh, working on to make sure that uh, uh, that will get to our local pharmacies. Colonel Ader, do you have anything to add to that? Thank you, sir. You know, just as the governor said, that, that the allocation was based off of licensed beds with a straight ratio for for the staff to, to support those beds, um, that occupancy rate was not there. So it was, it was an over allocation. So um, by the end of this month, we should be pretty close to being done with that, that long-term care uh, facility uh, program, the federal program. And we're currently working with our two partners, Walgreens and CVS to reclaim those doses. And we hope to, within the next week or so, to actually turn them loose on the 1B population and getting it into the arms of our Kansans. Is there any question remotely? Yeah, this is Alex with 307. Uh, my question is regarding the new strain. With it being so much more transmissible, does that mean it will be more likely for spread to happen in public places like schools, restaurants, and bars? And if and when that happens, would that warrant stricter health guidelines? Dr. Barrow. So the transmissibility is dependent upon uh, not using the mask and not distancing. So it, in the right setting, that is, if we continue to use the physical means to prevent spread, we should keep it under control. It's only in those circumstances. Uh, but uh, I, as I see it now, if we can maintain good masking, I don't think there'll have to be any changes in our current uh, um, scheme for management of restaurants and, and, and bars, et cetera. But I leave that up to the governor to comment on. I think uh, Dr. Merrill uh, got it exactly. Uh, that can be handled if we do it with our mask and our social distancing and following our guidelines. The key is following our guidelines. Uh, next question. Governor, Governor this, this, is, Governor, this Governor. is Samantha Boyd with KNWA. I've heard of a few school districts in Northwest Arkansas who did not receive the number of vaccines they expected or hoped to receive. And I'm wondering, is there a shortage all of a sudden or are there not enough vaccines to meet what larger district, districts need right now, like Springdale schools, for example? Well, uh, I haven't talked to Springdale schools, but I've talked to other school districts in Northwest Arkansas. and. <clears throat> Uh, they are coordinating with a hospital or with a pharmacy for a vaccination clinic of a large number of their staff. And uh, the, 
in one instance, uh, the pharmacy expected uh, 2,000 doses uh, and they did not receive that amount and they have to wait until we, you, it's one thing to request an allocation, the second thing is to receive that from the state because we have a limited supply, everybody does not get what they have requested and so we have to have very close and tight communication as to what is available at a pharmacy and what is available for these vaccination clinics so we don't uh, overly increase expectations to too high of a level. And so we're working through that. Uh, everybody has to be patient because when you have a limited supply and you have uh, a large state to cover, a large, lot of school districts, nobody expected that we would have all of the teachers vaccinated within one week. And right now we're in our second day. And so we've got a lot more work to do. There'll be more vaccines coming in and we'll get uh, all of them vaccinated. They just have to be patient to uh, make sure we get it scheduled in the right way. Governor, this is David Ramsey with the Arkansas Nonprofit News Network. Uh, regarding the situation with the vaccines uh, with Walgreens and CVS, I understand the over allocation issue that, that you described. I, I guess, can you comment on, on what went wrong just in terms of actually getting the relevant folks vaccinated at the long-term care facilities? What the holdup was, why, why that didn't happen uh, why that wasn't accomplished sooner? Well, David, I think actually uh, it's, it's worked well thus far. If you remember, our goal was to have all of our long-term care facilities vaccinated by the end of January. And uh, uh, it, while that is still a work in progress, we felt comfortable enough with our progress in the vaccination that we could open up to two categories of 1B uh, and add them to the mix. And so, uh, we're really ahead of schedule uh, in terms of uh, accomplishing those goals. Now, in terms of uh, the long-term care facilities, as I've mentioned before, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than just uh, someone coming in and, and a health care worker or somebody 70 plus. Uh, when you're in the long-term care facility, uh, you have to have uh, consents in many instances uh, and so that's been a little bit of slower process, uh, but the clinics are scheduled. Uh, you have to have uh, everything in place. And I have uh, been uh, a little disappointed in some of them not moving quicker. Uh, that's why uh, the Colonel is here with, uh, with a strong uh, leadership arm to uh, uh, say, let's get it done. This is really important. And they're working hard to do it. It's just uh, uh, we're able to control uh, our state contracts and our state initiative, but uh, whenever you have the federal contract that uh, some of the pharmacies, the long-term care facilities went with, we just don't have as much control there. Yes, good afternoon. It's Brett Rains with 4029 News. Uh, three quick questions. First, the alternative care facilities. We know Baptist Health, Van Buren, their first phase, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, something like 44 beds ready to go. Where do those stand? Are they being utilized at this time? What do we see for the future with those? And second and third topics, capital security ahead of inauguration day tomorrow. And lastly, we thought you might be in Washington today. Are you heading out soon and still planning on being there, Governor? Yep. Uh, on the alternative care sites, uh, uh, I had a report on that today uh, with our COVID uh, winter task force. Uh, Troy Wells uh, of Baptist uh, Health CEO uh, indicated that uh, they are ready to open today if the need was there. And I'm talking about a certain number of the beds. And so it is uh, uh, on schedule, and probably a little bit ahead of schedule and we expect those beds to be available as needed. Uh, in terms of the capital security, uh, uh, we had some precautions here in place at the state capitol on Sunday. When there was rally scheduled, there was not any problem. Uh, we continue to follow the intelligence. We will have extra security that is seen and unseen that will be available as needed. Uh, uh, hopefully it will not be needed, but we have everything in place to make sure that uh, the capital is secure and that uh, there's not any uh, damage to our property or to personnel here. We're taking extra precautions to make sure that's the case. And yes, 
as soon as I finish with the last question today, uh, I'll be headed to Washington, D.C. for the inauguration tomorrow of uh, President-elect Biden. So that is still uh, on my schedule and it's still uh, something I intend to do. Uh, any other questions? You good, Andy? All right. Uh, Colonel, did you, uh, you good? All right, with that, thank you all very much. Uh, have a great afternoon. All right, the uh, governor wrapping up his uh, news conference before you just heard him say he will be heading to Washington uh, this afternoon to uh, attend the inauguration of Joe Biden tomorrow there at the state at the U.S. Capitol. Let's get right to the numbers. Uh, a lower number than we've seen over the last several days, adding 1,331 new cases to the roster, makes that total 273,594. Uh, the number of active cases now dropping by 1,800. 43 more deaths pushes that total now to 4,386, and two more are hospitalized. Still not a record. That's, uh, that is down, well, quite a bit from the last couple of weeks, actually, even though there's two more today uh, to 1,265. We can talk about vaccinations. The state has uh, received 293,600 vaccines. Uh, for uh, frontline workers and hospital workers, they have given out 50, a little bit more than 50% of those vaccines to those workers. They have uh, received 80 or 80,000 uh, vaccines for long-term care workers and residents. They've given out 8% of that, but you heard them say that that is ahead of schedule. And because they are seeing fewer people uh, getting these vaccines in these long-term care facilities that they should be finished up by the end of this month. And what's left over will then be transferred to the 1B category, which actually started yesterday in Arkansas. Uh, you heard the uh, Dr. Jose Romero talk about that other variant of COVID-19 that came from the UK. There are 10 states reporting that right now. Eight specimens from Arkansas have been sent to the CDC for analysis, and so far nothing has come back on that. They say that's uh, about 70% more active and, more, and easier trans, transmittable between folks. And so they're, re, again, reiterating the three W's, wearing the mask, wash your hands, and uh, watch your distance. Uh, as far as education is concerned, the statewide community resource portal uh, is just now uh, starting up again, uh, or starting up across the state that gives uh, teachers and parents and faculty and staff more resources to help those students who are learning from home. And we'll talk more about that coming up today on your five news first at four and at five and six. Until then, have a good Tuesday afternoon. CBS crime drama, FBI, Missy, Peregrine, and be sure to always tune in to see what we're talking about here on The Talk.